regardless of what time I go to bed, I usually wake up between 6.30 and 7.30, but don't actually want to get out of bed, so I end up just sitting on my phone for probably way too long, getting irritated. I love the idea of running, I'm just not very good at it. I love running on trails. The problem is, I have no idea where I'm going. I get lost, and maps really is of no use out here. Elche yet. Super cute, super good. Check it out on Netflix. Highly recommend it. So I kind of feel like I probably should have stuck to my original idea of calling this the Cranky Vegan. I swear I'm not this cool. Well, I guess I am this cranky. I'll get to what I saw in a couple minutes, but it, it made me think about how um, the animal rights movement kind of has a short retention span when it comes to the history of our movement and what other movements have been doing in the past. When I lived in Oakland a couple years ago, some folks came up to me wanting to start a new animal rights group and they were asking for advice. And they told me what they were interested in doing and I told them this is a lot of stuff that had already been done before that we had done throughout the 90s, not to a lot of great success. And they doubted me because they said they'd never heard anything about this. And I said, well, you can't really find it on the internet, but here's a bunch of magazines that chronicle the grassroots animal rights movement in the United States from the 90s into the 2000s. And they looked at it and said, well, it's not online. And I said, no. They said, if we can't read it online, you know, those magazines are just to collect dust and we're not we're not interested man that took a that took a shot to the heart for that that wasn't just a rejection of like everything that i had worked on for the past 10 years but also erasing the history of thousands of people that had come before them i think there's two really big reasons why we need to pay attention to the history of our movement the first one is i think if we take the time to learn what we've done before we can then discover what worked what didn't work and how we can improve on those things to make ourselves better and more successful in the future I see a lot of people repeating the things that we all did in the 90s and that what the people in the 80s did before us had worked on and achieved and failed at um, and repeating those things over and over and over again because maybe they just don't know it. I saw something a while back that said this organization had done a daylight open rescue in a slaughterhouse in Oakland, California. And this is the first time this had ever been done in the United States. And, and it's great that they rescued those animals. I was happy about that for sure. But I had to pause because it certainly was not the first time that it had been done. It made me think of uh, the Yellow Rat Bastard Clothing Company in New York City where activists uh, stormed the place. They locked it down. Um, they took the rats and rescued them and took off with them. A daylight raid in the United States in New York City. I was watching the videos. They're falling everywhere! Son of a bitch! That's it, never buying these pretzels again. The bag sucks. Alright, that's better. You see that? How awesome is that? Kids locked down the doors, other people ran and grabbed the rats. Open daylight rescue. But the one that I that I actually thought of first was a protest in Flomath, Oregon. I remember watching this video when it came out, and this is like before YouTube, right? You couldn't go on the internet and just be like, do, 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 do. open rescue video, and then it pops up. You had to get someone to send this to you. Copy it, BCR to BCR. Most of people don't even know what I'm talking about. And I remember getting this video and watching it. Amazing. I heard this demonstration at a farm, rabbit farm, and they're like, oh, yeah, let's go get these rabbits. Run in there, grab the rabbits, run out before anyone could stop them. Open daylight rescue. And this isn't to say that like those people are better than the people doing it now. It's just that it would be valuable to go back and look and talk to those people that were involved in those things and say, hey, did this work? Did it not work? Why did it not work? And how can we improve on it in the future? Well, the second reason I think we need to really pay attention to our history is because I think in the animal rights movement, we love to talk numbers and statistics, and we tend to inflate those things. When we inflate these numbers and inflate these successes, it gives the impression that we are winning. And that's really the question of the day. Are we winning? I think we look towards numbers and we look towards successes to um, answer that question. And if we inflate these numbers and successes, we are doing a disservice to ourselves. We hear it all the time. We're at a tipping point for animals. We're so close to winning. The biggest social justice movement in the world. But I think if we start digging at the numbers and statistics, we're finding out that we really aren't increasing our numbers. In fact, we are falling backwards. I don't think that we are achieving what we think we are achieving. And again, I don't think it's because anyone's deceiving anyone intentionally, but I think it's because we haven't gone back and looked at the history of our movement. So for instance, in 2017, Israel had a march for animals. Um, amazing, they had 25 to 30,000 people show up. That's, that's incredible. But it was billed as the world's largest march ever for animals. While that's an amazing group of people, it's not true. It's not the world's largest. At the March for Animals in 1990 in Washington, D.C., 
organizers estimate between 50 and 70,000 people showed up. And here's the important part. The March for Animals in 1996, six years later, they had 3,000 people show up. And I think that's the real interesting part that we should be looking at in our history. What happened between 1990 and 1996 where 47,000 people decided they didn't want to come to the March for Animals again? And I think if I were part of the Israeli movement or anywhere in the world that was organizing these marches for animals, I would start looking at what changed so drastically in those six years so that I can improve on them in the future. Another one that I find really interesting is that in 2016, there was an article that came out that um, the number of vegans in Britain rised by 360% in 10 years. 360% in 10 years, that's amazing. Britain has always been looked at as the birthplace of the modern animal rights movement. And in 10 years, they managed to grow the number of vegans by 360%. When this happened, I remember very well social media, organizers, animal rights groups, celebrities, we're at a tipping point. Look at this, this is clearly, we are moving in the right direction. We are winning. And by the survey, it meant that there was 1.14 million vegetarians in Britain and 542,000 uh, vegans in Britain, which comes out roughly to like, what, 1.6, 1 1.7 million vegetarians and vegans. That's fantastic, 360% increase. But if you start digging around and you start looking at the history of vegans and vegetarians in Britain, you come to the same survey taken in 1990. It showed that there were 2.11 million vegetarians and vegans in 1990. What happened? From 1990 to 2016, we lost 30, 40,000 vegetarians and vegans. I read an article in Vegetarian Times from 1992 about this same survey in 1990. They estimated by the year 2000, vegetarians were gonna make up 20% of the British population. So what happened? Where did we go wrong? Did society change? Did the culture change? I don't know. But these are the things that we should be looking at, right? Instead of suggesting that we are at a tipping point, I would suggest by the numbers that we're just barely catching up to what we were at in 1990. But the real question should be why? And how can we learn from that history to make our future a little bit better? Holy crap, people, you let me go on way too long. My apologies if you are actually sitting through this entire thing. I didn't even get to the main point of my talk, so we're gonna have to make this a two-parter. Um, so next week, we will talk about the Animal Liberation Front, or the ALF. Not these folks, these folks. I hope you are as confused as I am. And also hit me up with questions, hit me up with comments. Let's start having these big discussions. Let's start communicating with one another. Let's tell each other that we're wrong or that we're right, and let's talk about it. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button. That first video had one subscriber. This video, I got 44 subscribers. Those 44 people are gonna be stabbed when next week's video hits their inbox. You can be one of those stabbed people too by hitting subscribe. In the meantime, let's fight smart. Let's fight to win. See you next week.